Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. So I'm going to start the legend of Korra from today. Uh, it'll be like, you know, I'll be, it'll, I'll be uploading it kind of in a similar fashion to uh, what I did with Avatar The Last Airbender. Two episodes every week and until and unless it ends. So yeah, it'll take a little bit time to more than three months, kind of the same time that it took for me to complete Avatar, but I do plan on completing this. Okay. So okay before we start uh like i checked out the uh, comics of avatar you know after the end after the end of avatar what happens and uh, i checked out uh two comics uh like i think that there's a trilogy like which is one is the promise the search and then the rift uh, i completed the promise and the search i've still not uh, read the rift i will read it eventually though so like you know i have to say uh, the things and the few questions that were still in my mind by the end of avatar kind of got answered and if you have seen avatar and have not read the comics i would recommend you to do so because a lot of answers uh, like you know, questions gets answered and a lot of big ones and i i have to say i enjoyed that a lot and i i don't think they have any animated version of that it would have been amazing if they actually animated these comics as well because they are integral part of the story it it is really important that you read them because a lot of huge revelations come out and the thing that i was thinking about like will uh, azula get redemption what will happen to um ozai you know will he get redemption as well all these things um these gets answered and i have to say um i'm pretty happy with how they like you know like actually concluded azula's whole thing and especially in the comics, the way they do it there, I'm pretty like you know uh, content with that. And as I said, like and I all I I liked Azula as a character, and the comics kind of like you know did not like you know was worth like the read. And the whole answer of where is mom gets answered there, and it's 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 a great comic, you know. And if you've not read it, I'm I'll, I'll definitely recommend you to go and do so because. It was amazing. You really get an answer. Where is mom? You really get it. I won't spoil anything. Uh, but one thing I'm definitely going to say, the thing that I wanted to uh, know is like, will Ozai get redemption? Will he become a good person or not? Um, no. He, after reading the comics, my, I don't know, like, you know, I don't know what I even expected from him, but it plummeted even lower. He's trash. He's completely trash and you'll be able to understand what I'm trying to say after you read the comic. So yeah, Ozai is like, you know, I, I have no sympathy for Ozai, but for Azula, as I said, Azula is a victim of circumstances and she, mm, there is a bit of thing with her, you know, in, in their comics and they kind of heavily, uh, like, you know, focus on her as well, especially the second comic, which is the search. So yeah, anyways, I do plan on reading the Rift as well because I think it has something to do with Toph and I'll read that and I'll, uh, there are a few other comics as well which I kind of plan on reading and you know, like, <laughs> anyways, I'll give my update later on. So yeah, okay, that was like a long portion. So yeah, that was like my whole thing with Avatar, The Last Airbender. Now I'm going to start Korra. I know nothing about this. The only thing that I know is um, that a new character is going to replace Aang. Uh, she's a female that's all I know nothing other than that so I'm going to check this out today I'm going to react to episode 1 and episode 2 so yeah let's start then so I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go okay Ooh. Ah, uh, my father. Whoa. United Republic of Nations. Oh, wow, the animation. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Republic City. Ah, uh, yeah, he's no more. 
Okay, so the legend of Korra. Obviously, Korra is is the avatar. I'm guessing this time. Uh, welcome to Republic City. Okay. Wow, the animation. Ooh. The last Airbender had impressive animation, but this is beautiful. Look at this. Wow. White Lotus. Oh, what? What's happening? Oh, this is, okay, this is... Ah! <laughs> Whoa! Wait, she's a fireman? No, wait, what? She's a kid! How can she? How is this possible? Wait a minute! Isn't she supposed to train and learn all the elements just like Aang? Oh my god! My god! Oh, okay, so she's still on the process of mastering it. Spiritual side. Tenzin. Wait, that's Katara? Whoa! Oh yeah, her hairstyle! <laughs> I realized that. Okay, so it's not that much time that this is happening. Okay, so what's her birth element? Like, which element? That's a big dog, I think. Oh no, I forgot. Avatar uh, has like weird animals in it. This is not a dog. Naga, that's his name. Just... Okay, this is the water, yeah, water tribe, isn't it? So she's a, a born, like the element that she's been born with is water. So she... Okay, so, okay, after Aang, if she's the after, after Aang, just after Aang, then it would make sense because Aang is like airbender, air, water, earth. Okay, who's Iki? Is that Appa or is it someone else? <laughs> Mat Wait, is that Ang's son? Strange woman. Milo. Wow, this seems unreal. Like, you know, we've been... There you go. I know what happened. I won't spoil. It's in the comics. <laughs> Pema. It's the wife. The third child?
<laughs> no vendor. <laughs> Boomy? Wait, that's... How many... Wait. How many... How many child does Katara have? Okay, they're kind of info dumpy. I'm kind of getting confused now. Little by little. I'll have to check that all out again. Oh. oh, she doesn't know airbending properly, that means. She's mastered all the other elements, but... Hmm? Oh. What? Oh, I... Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well... <laughs> Ugi, that's okay. Appa and this is Ugi. Oh my god, she's planning something. Yep, she's planning on <laughs> Katara. Oh, Saka's also. Hmm. All right. Well, time to go on a journey to Republic City. I wonder how she'll go there. Like, it's like, oh, cars. I can see a lot, like, she's completely opposite of Aang. I can see that. Completely opposite. Her bending, she's a genius. Unlike Aang. Aang was also kind of a genius, but in a different way. They're like, wait, what? Ah! Wow, this is okay. <laughs> Okay, I was not expecting this. Saddle mobile. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, will he? Will she? I'm. I'm sure sh she'll also meet Ang in her spiritual form or something. The way Ang met Roku. Ah. 
I'm guessing she's. Oh my god. Oh no. Gora. <laughs> Do you have money? Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you need a job first. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Not. Um, I don't think so. Wait, oh, <laughs> okay. I doubt that. Not that easy. <laughs> well, <laughs> run, Naga. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, great. Here we go. Well, obviously, like, however peaceful this world is. Yeah, I'm the avatar. Um, she's not even part of the city. <laughs> You're oppressing yourself. It does make sense, you know? Kind of, I guess. Okay, so yeah, if, even if the whole world is peaceful, there will be stuff like this happening. Okay. Yeah, this... Wait, what? Oh, great. Loan sharks. Pay for it. Um, yeah, obviously that's what they're going to do. Triple threat. Oh, great. Hmm. <laughs> what? My God. Oh, yep, and can firebend as well. Oops, and firebend. <laughs> yep. Great. This is the avatar. <laughs> God, my God. <laughs> uh. Well, property damage. I think you're you're going to be arrested now, Cora. Yeah, that's property damage. 
Well, these are like the elites, I'm guessing. Oh, metal benders! Nice. Um. Wait, they're not arresting Korra? I thought they would. Yeah, there you go. I knew that. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, don't do that. You're going to be in more trouble. Oh my god. Run. <laughs> Great. Oh. Ah, uh. <laughs> oh, Naga. Okay, there it is. Great. Oh, no. Yeah, this is. Okay. Is that Dolph? Dolph's statue? Oh, which she knows. Oh, Bayfong. Yeah, Dolph's family. Oh, she's Dolph's daughter. Wait, what? Wait, who did Dolph marry? Okay. Yep. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, but don't destroy the place. Hmm. Yeah. Polar bear dog. <laughs> uh. Hmm.
nicht, wa? Oh, Airbenders. Oh, this is Tenzin's uh, children. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. There you go. But no more trashing the whole uh like, you know? <laughs> No more destroying the place. Wow, she's strong. Alright. The avatar is here. <laughs> My God. Hmm. Wow, she can speak well. What? Who's that? Amon. Oh, this is the uh, those people. I don't remember the name of the organization, but. Okay, that's the end, I think. Yep, that's the end. All right. Uh, wow, that was a good start. So, okay, uh, here there are a few things that I first need to wrap my head around. Number one, Cora is, I'm guessing she has, she was born as a waterbender. But then like, you know, I don't know from, I'm guessing uh, different people came and they taught her all the other, like, you know, elements. And she, it seems she was able to bend from a very young age, uh, all the three elements. But like, here's the thing, um, that scene when we see, uh, where is that? Yeah, the scene where we see the White Lotus coming, to uh, Cora's house and they get in and here we here's the thing okay uh, the mom says that your search uh, you'll be happy to know your search has come to an end um, what makes you sure your daughter is the one this means like they were still not sure she was the avatar and then and the mom calls Cora Cora comes in And then she starts fire bending, uh, earth bending, and water bending. So here's the thing: before this, no one knew she was the avatar. This is the time everyone actually discovers that she's the avatar. So how is she able to bend all the elements? Not all, but the three elements from from the get go. Like how is it possible? And she's a child. Like it's not as if like people came and trained her. Because this was something that happened before she was that, like, you know, she, everyone realized she was the avatar. So, like, was that like her inner talent that she, uh, she was, like, you know, she was born with all the, the um, uh, what do you call it? The knowledge of all the three elements, fire, water, and, um, earth. This is one thing that's actually, like, you know, a big question in my mind. Like, um, so she was able to do this from the beginning. Yeah, she needed to master that. That's still, that was still left. But she was able to bend from the beginning. Like, that's insane, I have to say. Like, um, Aang had to actually learn all the bendings, uh, all the elements, like, one by one. But this girl, she, from the beginning, could do that. Except airbending. So, like, this is what I was saying. She is completely opposite from Aang. You know, like, 
first of all, like she, she, she's a genius, it seems. You know, and as I said, Aang was a different type of genius, but Korra is a different type of genius in a, another way. She, she seems to be, like, you know, able to quickly get things, like, you know, and, you know, she has, she was already born with all these talents, uh, all the bending techniques. And unlike Aang, who had to actually, like, you know, go from, now it does make a lot of sense, you know, like now in this world, it's peace, you know, unlike angst time when like you know everyone was at war not everyone but fire nation was at war with everyone so the world is at peace so there are a lot of other opportunities from like you know for other people from other nations to come and actually teach her which kind of like you know shows us how she could easily master all these elements except airbending which Tenzin never had the time to do like you know help her with so, and I'm guessing Tenzin is probably the only airbending master because I, I think Korra said something like that. Like you are the only airbending master. That's why I'm, we're, I'm stuck with you. Something like that. So, so, so that's why, you know, like since the world is at peace, there is a lot of more opportunities for everyone to get more, like, you know, bending techniques, like practice more and train more. Uh, which Korra was able to do, unlike Aang, where everyone is at war and Aang had to go from one place to another, one place to another, find the master, learn, you know, and all that stuff. And then the biggest problem was the firebending, firebending who would be the master, which Zuko later on helped him out with. So it was a more problematic thing with Aang, unlike Korra, who has enough time, you know, she has like plenty of time, she can just like, you know, little by little practice and um just like you know like become an avatar in a more organized and more disciplined way unlike you know running from place to place trying to find a teacher and then learning and then again going to the next place uh, you know in the fear of the fire nation actually attacking you all that stuff no such problems so yeah so I, like that's like the biggest thing here this is peace and you know like unlike angst time <clears throat> so okay now here's the thing, um, we meet a lot of people who we are acquainted with, uh, number one Katara obviously, and uh, Aang is no more, I would say that's why Korra is here, and like, now here's another thing, I do wonder, um, that means Aang died and after that Korra was born most probably, I think that's how it went. But Aang, like there was a time when they said that Aang did tell Tenzin to protect his legacy, which is Korra. So I'm guessing Aang probably told Tenzin that after I die, after I pass away, there will be, like, you know, an avatar will be born in the water tribe. So keep an eye out. And after you find her or him, uh, protect that one and like, you know, train that person. And after that, most probably Aang died, and then they were probably searching to trying to find the um, uh, avatar, and probably told everyone, you know, that if, if if you find the avatar and if the avatar is born in your house and you realize that, tell us immediately or something like that. And that's why you know, like I'm guessing, uh, Gora's mom and dad probably uh, called, uh, you know, called them when they realized that she's the avatar, and that's why they came. The White Lotus came. And they, like, you know, they confirmed that, yeah, this is definitely the avatar. And that's how it went, I'm guessing. And after that, you know, she, she started training in all the different elements. Okay, now, so, okay, so Tenzin is Katara's son. So, okay, um, Tenzin is Katara's son. And it seems like he has... Some siblings as well. <clears throat> and Katara is quite old now. I, I'm, I'm guessing she, she's probably like 80 or something. 75, 80. Uh, okay. Um. Okay, so yeah. Now we can see... <laughs> The grandchildren as well. So it's like, uh, what can I say? Like, it's like three generations, Katara, Tenzin, and, you know, the younger generation, the youngest generation, 
while Korra is like in the middle of it, in the middle of like, you know, uh, Tenzin and his children's generation in the middle. Like she's obviously young, uh, like, you know, uh, younger than Tenzin, but older than Tenzin's uh, children. So it's kind of like that and that kind of gives us a rough estimate as to when Aang died. Aang probably died when Tenzin was, um, I don't know, was like in the teenage years or something. It's probably somewhere around that and that Aang died. And it probably, uh, you know, and now probably it's currently like uh, six, uh, seven, uh, no, uh, 11 or 12 years that Aang has died. And Katara is, uh, you know, Katara is like an old woman now. It's probably something like that. I'm guessing Aang probably died when Katara was around 60 or something. You know, not that old, but still kind of, you know, like she's aging at that moment. Aang probably died. Okay, here's the thing. This time, this thing I, I wasn't able to properly catch uh, when I was reacting to it. Uh, Katara, when uh, Korra is trying to go away, Katara comes and Katara says, Aang's time has passed. My brother and many of my friends are gone. Okay, so Saka also died. Wow, I was not expecting that. Um, obviously, Saka is um, I don't know. Like, yeah, they are old, you know. Like, what else can I like? Yeah, probably Saka is here no more. And and she also said that one, many of my friends are also not here in the world. So. I wonder what happened, like, you know, where is Zuko? Is Zuko still alive or something? Or what happened? And Toph, we still don't know about Toph. We get to meet Toph's child. But here's another thing. So Toph has a kid. So I wonder who Toph married. That, and I wonder if Saka, if, like, you know, I mean, like, married Suki or something. Or if she, if he had children or something. And what happened to Suki? Like, these are all the questions. I'm sure they're going to answer us all of this little by little. So, yeah. Now, Korra goes, like, you know, to the Republic City. It's amazing, you know. Like, like everything's modern. Like, there's, like, huge ships flying around. <laughs> and, you know, like, this is amazing. And even though this is, like, the main hub of peace, uh, you know, the main center of peace and prosperity after Aang, like, you know, became the Avatar and, like, you know, the whole... Whole... Fine Nation battle. Uh, this is the main, like, you know, center of peace. But obviously, there will be people who are not, like, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not happy with this. For example, the whole equalist comes up. There's like people with masks. They're like, oh, like benders are, uh, you know, like, uh, like you know, are, are uh, what do you call it? Are tyrannical they are um you know like oppressing us these things and like you know like they are like saying stuff like that now here's the thing i'm sure this place like as we saw after that like you know these guys are not wrong in a way there are benders who are kind of oppressing the non-benders for example the whole loan sharks that come up and they're like haha give me money or i'll bend uh fire bend and burn your place down this whole thing like like yeah like obviously there will be people here however peaceful the country the world is uh people like this will obviously be there and that's why you need like a law an order system and which is why i'm guessing tenzin as he said like i need to be here i need to like you know be here and see that this place does not like you know does not start going in a different direction everything like my father's legacy can be uh, protected all that stuff so yeah but Korra comes here Korra tries to help them unfortunately she just thrashes the whole place <laughs> and we can see metal benders which kind of shows us how uh, Toph's whole um okay if you guys don't know as I said there are a few things that came up in the um you know comics if you've not read the comics I won't spoil much stuff but one thing I can say is that in the comics Toph started an academy you know an academy where she started teaching metal benders you know metal bending and she started teaching metal bending the the whole bending techniques and everything she had a few uh disciples as well there i'm guessing that kind of like you know became more relevant and more thing i've still not read the rift the comic the rift after uh like it's the the third comic in the trilogy 
uh, I'm guessing we have we probably have more stuff regarding Toph there because Toph is like the main person in focus on uh, in the rift the comic which I'll read later on and I'm guessing I'm going to get more information there as well so after that I'm guessing the metal bending academy kind of flourished and now here we are the police officers are all metal vendors which kind of suits them you know like police officers metal vendors it, it, it kind of suits them <laughs> and uh, yeah it's it's good to see and uh, we meet um, Toph's uh, kid and again I'm really curious as to who Toph married like <laughs> I'm really curious I'm, I'm sure they'll let us know in the future but yeah okay and um <clears throat> All right, that was that, and she she gets captured, and Tenzin comes, and Tenzin's like, yeah, let's like you know just let's leave her. I'll I'll try to like you know take her back home. <laughs> and when Cora's going away, like you know Tenzin's kids come. Cora is sad and everything. Tenzin is like, you know what? Like this city is obviously my father's legacy, but you are as well. So I'm going to stay here, and you're also going to stay here. I'm going to train you your airbending techniques over here and uh, yeah that's nice to see like you know she'll be here after from here onwards um and <laughs> in front of everyone she had to like give her like a speech and everything she's like yeah i'll help you like you know will help protect the peace and all that you know like reporters and everything <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it's funny like you know how the situation is so different in avatar in ang's case and had to actually hide himself <laughs> in case anyone knows that she's alive and the firebenders will come and just kill him while here, Cora is in front of everybody, like you know, like introducing herself, like hey, hi, I'm the Avatar. I'll I'll help you guys. I'm I'm going to make this world peaceful, like that. So, <laughs> like yeah, like so different. And uh, yeah, that was that. And then in the end, we see the equalists. They are like planning something. I'm guessing. So yeah, we'll have to wait. Like I, I, the thing that I'm really like, you know, I'm, I'm loving about this is like seeing what happened to the different characters, you know, in, in Avatar, like how they changed and what happened, the relationships, uh, and all the other stuff. And as far as I could gather, Katara, I think has, a f I'm guessing, f a f multiple children. I'm not sure how many. Like it said something about Tenzin's brother or something. I forgot. So um, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to meet them as well. So they're Ang's children and uh yeah i'm looking like we already met tenzin and he seems like a really like you know nice guy i think obviously this is ang's and Kat ang and katara's children so i'm sh sure every one of them are good good people and uh yeah it's, it's so like you know like what can i say it's so it's so like unreal and like you know what can i say to see all of these people in in, in this way like you know like katara's old <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm sure we'll meet a, meet a few other characters as well who we are already acquainted with, maybe their descendants, and that's why you know it's just so weird. Like you know the the usual gang that we had, and I have to say I'm really miss, missing Saka. Saka was as I said in in Avatar in the Last Airbender. Saka was my favorite character, and he was like you know his his comedy was one of the <laughs> most important part of of the show and he he just kept us so entertained all right so yeah like i really hope that i'm not sure what characters will get i'm, I'm sure uh, qatar is probably going to make some friends and everything maybe she'll also have like a group that ang had so if she does have a group like that i really hope we get a character like saka you know who just is like you know like livens everything up with <laughs> the crazy sarcasm and <laughs> the weird sense of humor <laughs> my god uh okay um anyways let's start so all right so let's start with episode number two so yeah without further ado let's get started i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's start all right so here's the countdown three two one Cool. Okay. Ooh. Mm. 
That was short. Yeah. <laughs> What's with the weak app? Leaf in the wind. Okay. Okay, what was the name of this air bison? Oogie or something? <laughs> Row bending. Okay. <laughs> but they are okay well I'm sure she's going to go there oh oh Okay, yeah, true. Oh, yeah, water and air is opposite, isn't it? No. No, no, okay. Oh, the, okay, anyways, letter. Genora. Oh. Spinning, okay. Whew. All right. This is a challenge. Leaf. Oh, we like the leaf. All right. <coughs> wow. Oh, all right. I, yeah, I was expecting that. <laughs> well, you fail. Zero, <laughs> zero points. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Well. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> coughs. Oh no. Ah. Uh. Wow. Oh, okay. She, she, I'm sure she's going to go there. Cry the sex and get it. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. Okay. Dance is a bit serious, but you know. <laughs> um.
<laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, that. He's sleeping, isn't he? Hmm. Okay, well... <laughs> uh. What? Oh, it's the guards, okay. Yep, she is going there. Wow. Yep. She is a master of the other elements. Whoa. That's the arena? Okay. Well. That doesn't look like an arena. It looks like some kind of fancy. <clears throat> Everything's empty. What's happening? Oh, maybe they're in more in the inside. Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, my god, that's a uh... Bolin Bolin Marco Bolin <laughs> Well Oh, it's a brother <laughs> okay. Firefights. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Oh, so there's like a water bender, a fire bender, and an earth bender in the, in the team. Okay. Oh. <coughs> Woo. Oh. Oops. Yeah, oops. Oh. 
Oh. Yep. Tiger Delos. Oh no, they are losing. Okay, there you go. Wow. Damn, cool animations. Hmm. Oh, oh no. Oh. Well, Marcos left. No. Okay, there you go. Wow. Okay, one on one. There you go. Wow. Ha. That was a comeback. <laughs> yeah. Nah. <laughs> yeah, like it's like a Hmm, you'll see <laughs> yeah, I'm a water vendor as well. <laughs> it's kind of like Saka in a way. But not as good as Saka. Saka's in a league of his own. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> hmm attic okay <laughs> but not this Okay, she kind of went a little bit there. Uh, um, well, there you go. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my God.
Oh my god, here we go. No. Okay. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> he started imitating her. Great. Wow. Not Cora. <laughs> God. What? Oh, did he run away or something? I'm guessing Cora's going to fill in or something. Well, true. Ah! Okay. Hard knocks. It's big. <laughs> the dress. Um. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah. That's not the in the rules. Yeah. Oh. Uh Well Yeah No uh. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it is foul. <laughs> the avatar. Yeah. She's the avatar. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you have some answers to give. Mm. Okay, don't start. You know what this is reminding me of? I know that this came a lot earlier. This is learning, reminding me of Boruto, what the, like, the whole modern thing and... <laughs> I know Boruto came a lot later than this, that I know. Oh, 
Ok. Ups. Come on. There you go. Yes, she's doing it. She's doing it. She's doing the airbending move. Yeah, you can teach her like this. You know, like the way she can learn, the she, way she wants to learn. And I'm guessing Tenzin will also be able to be acceptful of this whole thing, you know? Like, I can see a little bit of, you know, stereotypical, like, you know, like, oh, this is bad, these modern things are bad, modern thing equals bad, that thing, in Tenzin, but I think he'll be able to appreciate this more. There you go, there you go, look at him. <laughs> like, you need a balance, you know, like, blatantly disagreeing with something without even... You know, looking at what it is. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay, there you go. I'm, I'm sure they'll come into understanding now. Oh, they... Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah, well, this is this is teach her, you know, how to bend properly and fight uh, new techniques and stuff. Okay, that was it. Yep, I think that's it. All right, this was episode number two of uh, the Legend of Korra. Now, <clears throat> now here here we can see um, the whole thing of modern and the traditional method. This thing now, like we can already kind of see, like you know, the whole thing with Tenzin, where he's like, oh, these are like you know these uh, pro bending matches. They are just you know, uh, something that, um, what do you call it? That uh, is not, what, what did he, what, what did he use? He said something that uh, disrespects the thing or something like that he said. I can't remember what he actually said, but something along those lines, you know, like this is not you, how you do it. And those are completely bad. You should not go, go and try to learn stuff from there. Like this whole thing, but, <laughs> Like, uh, like it's funny to uh, like you know uh, think that if you guys like not like I'm, I'm sure everyone remembers that Toph was kind of involved in this whole like you know bending matches if you, you know the whole earth bending matches that she used to do and she's a master you know she's like one of the best earth benders so it's not necessarily that yeah these things equal to not good like you know, only traditional methods of learning will teach you like we need to change with the changing generation you know like which a lot of people are aren't able to do because of you know their emotional bonds their you know nostalgia all that stuff because of that a lot of people usually are unable to keep advancing with the advancing generation that's why you know there's a lot of people uh, like you know like a lot of um people uh old, like you know elder people who kind of say that oh this like back in my days we used to do this and back in my days this is what we did <laughs> like you know that that whole thing comes up and um that's basically because they are you know like that's like the way they learned everything they have emotional attachment to that 
you know like back in their days what they used to do like i'm sure when we'll get get older you know we'll also probably think of back in our days like you know like what fun we used to have and there will probably be a, quite a few of us who will also be like oh nowadays modern generation kids do this uh we back in our days we used to do that that was so amazing like this is obviously going to happen in each and every generation you know and and obviously the newer generation <laughs> you know they'll be like oh you guys are boomers like this whole thing so <laughs> that's pretty natural and you know like we can see that whole thing here as well tenzin is like oh like this way is wrong modern way of you know like the airbending the pro bending that they do is wrong it's not good we should treat uh, like you know we should uh, uh learn stuff in the traditional method like just sitting down meditating and everything but cora obviously since she is one of the younger generation she's like why should i listen to you <laughs> and she's like you know off on her own way <laughs> saying like yeah you teach bad and just goes away like you know starts um uh you know not listening to him like blows away the the whole like you know air bending that thing and joins the fire ferrets and like then like you know like this, this is the whole thing modern versus traditional and when tenzin comes and you know like actually watches the whole thing he's like wait a minute this is kind of like the air bending that we do isn't it like you know the way they're moving the way they're dodging and everything and i can see that cora is able to like you know absorb this a lot more better than the way i'm teaching her so uh can't like you know we, we can use this to teach her stuff and then that's when she realized and you know like and he also realized that maybe this is not that bad as i thought it would be <laughs> and yeah that's that's basically you know what it is like you know when like those people say back in my days we used to do this we used to do that and when they like you know when they are actually introduced to the modern things and they actually are able to understand how good the modern things are how convenient they are how fun they are a lot of people actually change their mind and that's basically what happened here tenzin tenzin i'm sure tenzin never actually went to these pro bending matches and never even saw anything like as soon as he got to know that yeah this is like they're using bending for these type of sports he was like oh this is bad it, i'm sure he didn't even see it but this time when he sees and sees it with his own eyes he's like yeah this needs like you know you you require actual talent to do this and you can you know you can convert this into like a training regimen and you can teach cora with this and that's how he's able to understand that yeah maybe modern things equals to bad is not all all the time it's not like that so <laughs> yeah and that was the whole thing with tenzin this, this is in tenzin's like you know thing for Cora, it's completely the opposite. Cora's like, why am I just sitting here learning the traditional method of airbending? You know, like it doesn't even do anything. Maybe he's teaching me bad. Maybe like, you know, we de don't need airbending and stuff. Like, like that's how, like, you know, the, the, that's like the whole younger generation perspective. She's like, I want to have fun. Uh, like airbending equals to freedom. So why am I being like, you know, <laughs> why am I being like, uh, like confined here? And not letting um, uh, no one's letting me out why is that happening like that way like she's she's like in her own perspective she's watching at this and that's why she kind of disrespected tenzin like blew the whole things away and all that stuff so and here she also kind of comes to a compromise and understanding you know when she realizes that i cannot win this match but if i use the airbending technique that tenzin showed me i can win this and there you go she was able to realize that yeah maybe the traditional method is not as bad so it's kind of like both of them were like in the extremities so both of them were kind of able to come into a middle ground and both of them are like tenzin is like yeah maybe this is not that bad and Cora is like yeah maybe this is not that bad the traditional technique and now they are kind of in the same place and can come to an understanding I'm sure after this Tenzin will think of different ways to actually make Cora motivated to learn airbending through these type of techniques, these type of ways. And Cora will also probably be more happy to learn these airbending techniques. She won't be like, oh, I don't need this. Because she was able to understand that she really needs airbending. Yeah. So yeah, like that was that was a good episode. And as I was saying, like, you know, as I said, like, you know, I've um, obviously Bodo came a lot after this, but this whole thing of like, you know, that whole scene of 
when um <laughs> when you know like uh tenzin came and tenzin like oh these modern methods and everything and koro's like yeah i need to like you know this is the way we actually change these modern methods are actually needed and tenzin is like no we don't need this all that stuff that that really reminded me of boruto you know and i know boruto came a lot after this but you know since i've watched boruto before this obviously i'm kind of referencing that and uh, yeah and this is the same the, it's kind of like the same setting here i'm guessing boruto kind of like i don't know if it took it from this like inspiration from this or something but the setting is completely the same you know like the older generation naruto the older generation ang and now we have Korra, the newer generation boruto and both of them are like you know kind of clashing and everything <laughs> that kind of thing so i'm guessing i'm guessing boto kind of like you know took inspiration from this you know uh this uh, legend of korra or something like that but yeah now one thing i'm pretty glad i'm quite glad is that korra actually came into an understanding with tenzin unlike you know you know a, a lot of ways this actually goes is they never come to an understanding and they just keep doing what they do uh, until like I don't know, like uh, 20, 30 episodes. And after that, they come to an understanding. Thankfully, that was not the case here. They come into an came into an understanding within one episode. And yeah, that's good. Okay, so we meet a few new characters as well. Bolin and um, what was his name? Marco, I think that was his name. I can't remember. But these two characters. And uh, they're like in the fire ferrets. And Korra also kind of joined the fire ferrets. Now, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, I was kind of in the previous episode, I was kind of saying that, oh, we need a character like Saka. Bolin kind of is like that, but not as good as Saka. Like, you know, like he has that kind of a quirky, uh, like, you know, character of like, you know, making weird jokes and kind of like, you know, an easygoing attitude and everything. But Saka was way better. I'm not sure if, like, you know, this is going to change in the future or not like but i think the comedy aspect is a lot less in legend of korra i feel that like avatar was hilarious you know it it like the, the whole setting of avatar was like it, it's so serious you know like there's like a war going on and everything and um uh like you know like the fire lord doing this that but like within that like each and every character had their own way of like you know f making us laugh like Aang had his way of like you know doing weird stuff. Saka was just full on comedy <laughs> material. He just made us laugh with everything that he said made us laugh. I think <laughs> you know the way he talked, the way he like, you know the way he expressed himself and all. Like Saka was a full like you know like a, a, a comedy god or something. I have to, <laughs> something like that. I loved Saka so much. Toph had his own way, uh, her own way of like, you know, like self-deprecating sense of humor and like, you know, kind of roasting others. That was Toph's thing. And Katara was her, had her own way of like, you know, making bad jokes, which itself kind of like was made it, made the whole situation funny. And Katara was more like the straight, like, you know, the, you know, like the whole thing of um the person who actually retorts to everything that kind of role katara had like within these three like you know <laughs> weird like you know uh, uh, people with some weird sense of humor toff uh, katara uh, toff ang and saka uh, katara was like the only normal person which kind of made it comedic in her own way so everyone had like their own way of making us laugh and everything i feel like in that way the legend of korra is a not a bit but quite weak i i did not love that much you know it has its jokes and everything it's, 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 there's few parts that's funny but i feel like uh, after the last Airbender was way funnier than this it it it's, it was it, its humor was intelligent and i loved ang like you know uh, after the last Airbender's humor which is very missing from that i'm not sure if we'll get that eventually later as time goes on but you know like in the beginning two episodes that i've watched i think that's a bit lacking like that's the only thing that i can see like the only difference obviously the animation is way better here obviously because this is a lot modern and the setting i'm also kind of liking it i'm, I'm loving the fact that we're meeting so many new characters who are like you know uh kind of uh related to all the other characters we knew in avatar but all all those things are really good i'm really enjoying that the story is also kind of interesting it's okay you know it's barely the start i'm sure it'll pick up later on but <clears throat> i'm a bit disappointed with the comedy 
I'm not sure if this will improve in the future, but yeah, like I feel like comedy was one of the strong points of Avatar: The Last Airbender. I I really enjoyed Avatar's comedy, but we'll have to wait. You know, like it's okay, but yeah. Anyways. Okay, so yeah, like he she joins the fire first and as we said, like, you know, like she she wasn't able to learn in the way traditional methods. So she this is the way she can learn, you know, like this is the way she actually enjoys the whole thing. And she like, you know, you know, it's, it's better to learn something enjoying yourself than just like, you know, like just keeping quiet and like, you know, kind of pushing yourself to do that. That's no way to actually learn stuff. If you are having fun doing stuff, you're going to learn stuff a lot easier than like, you know, than the alternative where you just keep quiet and just shove your head with like, you know, like lessons, meditation, all that stuff. That's definitely not Korra. Korra's not going to do stuff like that. He's, she's probably going to do it in this way, in her own way. And thankfully Tenzin was able to understand that. Korra was also kind of able to come to a compromise and she's like, okay, I'll be using the traditional method of airbending the the techniques because that really is helping me so it's good that they came to an understanding by the end and by the end Cora was like yeah you know what i'm going to stay there i've already joined their team <laughs> you know <laughs> and Tenzin's like my god this girl <clears throat> so yeah that was a good good episode um i liked it and yeah so that's it guys so that's my uh, reaction to episode one and two of legend of Korra. as i said like <clears throat> i feel like there are a few things that are missing um the start you know the start i, I feel like ang uh, avatar also kind of started in a, in a slow manner but it started to pick up and the story became so amazing like every show is going to be like that you know like whenever any show starts there are a lot like it's very rare for a show to have an explosive start you know where you're like oh my god this is so good from the beginning that's obviously not going to happen especially for long shows so um and like you know avatar also kind of was had a slow start and it started picking up and it was so amazing by like you know by the second season it was just amazing third season fantastic and i'm sure Korra is also probably something like that we'll need like you know this is just just the introductions we're getting these are the introductions obviously nothing spectacular will happen here we're going to get introduced to the different characters and then everything will start so I'm guessing it will be something like that. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I have high hopes for this and uh, I'm looking forward to what's going to happen. But as I said, the comedy, I feel like it needs a little bit improvement. Like if, like if you know, like what, if I did not watch Avatar and I started watching this first, which is always something that you should not do. Like why the hell would you even watch this if you've not watched Avatar The Last Airbender? But I'm just saying for the sake of it, you know, if I just if I watch this at the beginning, you know, I wouldn't have any problem with the comedy. But since like Avatar had like, you know, like put such a high, like, you know, pedestal on the comedy, like, you know, like after watching Avatar, I'm feeling like the comedy is nowhere near Avatar's comedy. And like, yeah, like I feel like I'm, I'm, I hope that the comedy improves little by little. Not I don't want like that type like an you know, avatar the last airbender level of comedy you know but a little bit more you know close to it i i i want that because uh these two episodes it was funny there were funny portions but it was not that funny you know like it was it was okay it was a little few little chuckles that's it like the only like, part i felt uh, like you know in this episode was a little bit funny was the part where uh you know <laughs> Uh, the whole like uh, what's her name bolin the whole bolin section when he she he kind of asks her like wait so you can do earth bending water bending and fire bending so and like, you know marco i think that's what's his name marco he said like uh yeah he, she's an avatar and you're an idiot and <laughs> and he's like wait like it's kind of like you know that that whole section that really reminded me of saka that that part and the comedy that was the only part that i really like you know like uh, that was a real good comedy that that portion other than that everything else was kind of small little chuckles like uh yeah so that's the one thing that's the one thing i think it's a bit weaker but everything else everything uh, uh, else is really good animation is way beyond avatar obviously because this is a lot modern but yeah that's my impression of this like you know if you actually compare this to avatar the airbender that's my impression. 
I'm sure it'll change as time goes on. I'm 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 sure the uh, story will also become more fleshed out after the introductions end, and we're probably going to get like you know uh, some kind of a goal or something. Something will happen hopefully, and you know it'll get more interesting and more exciting, and hopefully the comedy also evolves alongside that. So I'll be waiting for that. That's it, guys. So thank you guys for watching. This was my reaction to Cora. Uh, I was going to say Cora, the last Airbender. What the hell? <laughs> uh, the legend of Korra so if you guys enjoyed this video uh, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and I'm definitely checking them out so that's it thank you guys for watching I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of the legend of Korra so until then goodbye and have a nice day